Let's be on our feet as we begin to give God praise this evening. Let's bless his name for all that he has done, for all that he will do. Let's glorify his name. Let's thank him for the word that is not lacking in our midst. Just open your mouth and thank Jesus this evening for his faithfulness, for his loving kindness. Open your mouth and say thank you to your maker. Go ahead and say thank you to Jesus. He's a faithful father. For all our loved ones, for our family, for our friends. Go ahead and say thank you to Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we bless your name, O God. Jehovah Jireh, we give you praise. Jehovah Nisi, we give you praise. For your loving kindness, we give you praise. For your tender mercies, we give you praise. For your loving kindness, we give you praise. For your faithfulness, we give you praise. Church, go ahead and say thank you to Jesus. Go ahead and say thank you to him. Is the Alpha, is the Omega. Redeemer and friend, we say thank you. The everlasting God, we say thank you. Our Savior, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the word in our midst, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the word out. Hallelujah. Hey. Thank you, Jesus, for your church. Thank you, Jesus, for your church. We give you praise, oh God. Church, go ahead and say thank you to him. Just go ahead and say thank you to him this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We extol your name, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. For your loving kindness, we say thank you. For counting us worthy, we say thank you. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. Blessed Redeemer, we worship you. Mighty God, we worship you. Father, we are here in your presence. Take your rightful place. Take your rightful place, oh God. Take your rightful place, oh God. Take your rightful place, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha and
worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just go ahead and say thank you to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our Savior, we give you praise. You say, I come to us. 
Worship Him. Bless the name of our King and our Christ. Hallelujah. We honor you tonight. We worship you tonight. Blessed be your name. Amen. Worship. Hallelujah. Father, we give you worship tonight. Thank you for gathering us before you. Thank you for bringing us from all walks of life tonight. Sing, lift your voice and just worship him wherever you are under the sound of my voice. On site and online. Give him praise. Give him glory. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Help me sing. You deserve the glory. Come on, church. You deserve the glory and the honor. And the honor. Lord, we lift our hands. As we lift our hands in worship. As we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. You are great, you are great, cause you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, lift your voice and hearts in worship, come on, there is no one else like you, you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Father, we thank you tonight because there's none like you. you. Receive our worship. In Jesus' name we have worship. Amen. I said in Jesus' name we have worship. Amen. All right, clap your hands, oh you people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. Sound man, find some volume for me somewhere. Maybe on your mains. Fine. All right. So I don't scream. That's fine. Thank you. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. Welcome you especially tonight to this midweek service on site and online. We trust that the same anointing that is in this place will flow to you in a powerful way. Amen. Amen. All right, so we've been dealing with the series. Thank you, sir. We've been dealing with the series. Um, what's the teaching series we've been dealing with? The way of what? The way of love. Hallelujah. All right, thank you. 
All right, so for to, tonight, for a subtopic, the Spirit of God laid very strongly on my heart to deal with the subject of shame. To deal with the subject of shame. Whether you like it or not, I've been, well, I've been pastoring for a short while. I don't know if it's too short or too long, but I've been pastoring for a while. And I can tell you from experience that many believers are living in shame. Some can't talk about it. Um, some are not bold about it. But the truth is, when you sit in counseling with people, you observe that there's a shame problem that they have not dealt with or submitted to the cross of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing much you can do as a believer if you operate in shame. And we want to look at the perfect law of liberty tonight to see what the Spirit of God has said in Scripture because he's the author of scripture about this subject matter. But tonight, I want to start by laying a foundation in Hebrews chapter number 9. Please help me. Um, Hebrews chapter number 9. You just stay there. Uh, we're looking to our scripture. So please permit us. We won't be using the multimedia screens today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter number 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. It's important you open up your spirit, man, to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say to the church today. Please stand for the reading of God's word as our custom in this house is we do that to honor the second person of the Trinity who is the word of God and in person, Jesus the Christ. Hebrews 9.14 We're going to read together Just one verse after the count of three We're going to read together Hebrews 9.14 If you found it, please say Amen, amen. Hallelujah One, two, three How much more Shall the blood of Christ Who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God one more time two three go how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your what from dead works to serve the living God in the teaching series the way of love for a subtopic tonight we want to deal with the subject victory over shame victory over shame let's pray father in the few moments that we have i avail my vessel to you that you will speak through these vocal cords take over this tabernacle minister to someone under the sound of my voice in the name of jesus i receive utterance tonight to be able to declare the counsel of god i declare that this word will profit everyone under the sound of my voice on site and online and it will do an eternal and eternal work in us in jesus name and god's people said edify the church and glorify jesus alone in jesus name please you may be seated in the presence of god i like for you to listen very carefully so that you can get you know the perspective of the spirit of god tonight i want to start by dealing with something and i'll get into the subject of shame but can i by way of introduction say something you see, um, sometimes we have shame in our life because of the things we went through, because of rejection, because uh, probably we failed at a point in time in our lives and that spirit crept into our hearts and stayed there so that even though you are born again, you are still suffering from the spirit of shame. Permit me to call it a spirit because it's a spirit. It's a spirit of shame. But tonight, from the pages of scripture, we are going to see what Jesus did on the cross concerning your shame I'd, I'd like to announce something tonight that the cross of Jesus Christ is the answer to the shame in your life one more time the cross of Jesus Christ uh, you see no matter how good what do they call them is it a psychic you know what they call a psychic all right am I correct 
All right. You, you see, you can, you can have shame and sit with the psychic. And they can do all they can do, but they won't really get to the root of the matter. Because it's only the cross of Jesus Christ. And we'll see this from the face of scripture. It's only the cross of Jesus Christ that deals with the spirit of shame. But before I get there tonight, I want to lay a foundation so that you will understand and appreciate what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. Now in Hebrews, the, 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 the scripture we just read... Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Please, I'll read in your hearing. I want you to follow me gradually. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself? Where did he offer himself? Bible students, where did he offer himself? On the cross. So he offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, observe this. There's what they call the priest, there's what they call the altar, and there's what they call the sacrifice. Now, if you are like me, the kind of movies I like to see are ancient movies. You know what I mean by ancient movies? What do they call that? What do they call those kind of movies? What's the language for them? All right, um, movies like Troy. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Uh, do I still look sanctified in this assembly? They, they don't see movies, praise God. Hallelujah. I see once in a while when I have the time, um, things like Legend of the Seeker, you understand what I'm saying? All those movies that got this touch of the supernatural. I like to watch them a lot. Okay? In, in, uh, let me not preach movie. I wanted to tell you I saw scriptures in one of them fulfilled. Praise God. But let's leave all of that. So you don't say this pastor is not spiritual. Watching movies. Amen. <laughs> okay, where was I? I was talking about those kind of movies. Now, if, if you watch those movies, you observe that there's a priest, there's an altar, and there's a sacrifice. Now, let me take it back to the Bible from Genesis. How many of you know there's no priest without an altar? You know that. There's no priest without an altar. There's a priest that presides over an altar, and really, the altar is incomplete without a sacrifice. That's why Abraham was walking, all right, going to Mount Moriah, that was a type of Calvary, and carrying the wood on Isaac's back. Because that was a prophetic picture of Jesus walking through Golgotha's hill with the cross. And when he got there, Isaac asked a critical question. Stay with me tonight. Isaac said, I can see the altar. I can see everything in place. But he asked the question, where is Bible students? Where is what? The sacrifice. So you have a priest. You have the altar and you have a sacrifice. Now to my text in Hebrews 9.14, scripture makes it very clear that Jesus, who is the high priest of our calling? Jesus is the high priest of our calling. But you notice um, when, you, when you come to a priest, okay, um, according to scriptures, if you have leprosy, are there some things you have to bring to the priest for cleansing? So you have to bring some items, praise God. You see that now. You see that all these things the devil is doing is copying something. You understand what I'm saying? If you check the occultic world, they do things like this. Am I correct? I know you've not been there, but you've, you've seen it. Things like that, praise God. You see that they are copying that pattern. Amen. So the priest would, you bring those stuff to the priest. The priest will offer the sacrifice, preside over that altar, and then you're free. And then the priest will proclaim you clean and things like that. But in this new covenant that we are, if you're born again, Jesus has become our high priest. Now, instead of the high priest to tell you the sacrifice to go and bring, stay with me now, this high priest offered himself as the sacrifice. Let me, let me break it down. I, I, I don't think you got it. So you have an issue in your life, and the priest comes, and the priest says, I need you to go. How do they do it in this funny place? You go and get um, two kula nuts and get, uh, praise God, one chicken. I wonder how people go there. You go to a man that is, his environment is smelling and you want him to make you rich. Something is wrong. He's living in poverty. You want him to help you so that your kids can be smart. And he ended up as a native doctor. Something is wrong with your thinking. Uh, let me leave that and mind my business. Now. You see, they tell you, bring this, bring that. But Jesus, our high priest, he looked at the matter. And he said, there needs to be a sacrifice on this altar. And then he himself, watch this, the priest jumped on the altar and became the sacrifice. I want to give you a perspective to Calvary. What you see on Calvary is Jesus not just dying for you, but dying as you. So he took your place. All right? 
that is very important to appreciate before we begin to talk about what the cross of Jesus Christ did as regards your shame. I want, I want you to begin to appreciate what Calvary really means. Okay? So the Bible says the priest himself offered himself. So he was the priest, but he became the sacrifice. Let me take it a step further. How many of you know that Jesus or God demands us to be righteous to deal with him. How many of you know that? We have to be pure and righteous. So God noticed that we have to be righteous. So you know what he did? He demanded righteousness for, from us. But how many of you know that you can't be righteous in and of yourself? So you know what he did? He offered his righteousness. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he demanded as the priest over the altar that you be righteous. But instead of you looking for your own righteousness, he took his own righteousness gave it to you so that you can serve him with his own righteousness. That's the priest offering himself. So now, what am I going to? The cross of Jesus is a perfect picture of love. Where a man tells you to do something and then he goes into the streets to do it for you. He says, you've got to be righteous to approach me. And then he gave you his righteousness to approach you with his righteousness. demands a sacrifice but he offered himself on the altar to be the sacrifice hence the priest offered himself the clearest picture of love you can ever find i've said this before i said this on sunday when i began the teaching series nollywood cannot teach you love hollywood bollywood somebody called one other name cannywood and gollywood and all the woods can't teach love better than calvary's cross First Thessalonians, quickly, still digging the foundation tonight. It's a Bible study, so get ready to turn into scriptures. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter number five. You know, you know what? One of the worst things that can happen to you is religion. Because in religion, you don't really understand what Calvary is about. You just come. Some of you are in church because your parents started taking you to church. I mean, one of my precious ones, you know, she had an issue in her life. She came to see me for counseling and told me she had this issue and all of that. I said, why didn't you talk about these things? All right? I said, on Sunday, if you had said this, I would have ministered to you along these lines. I, you know, you'll be free. But then I said, call me in the next one hour. All right? I needed to pray about it. The Bible says, I'll give you a mount of wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist nor gainsay. So you don't, you don't counsel from the flesh. And then this question popped up from my spirit. What was the question? Can you imagine asking somebody who has been in church for years, are you born again? Because the issue she was facing, if she knew Calvary, are you hearing what I'm saying? If she knew the power of Calvary, she would have known that she had authority over it. And she says sincerely, she can't remember being born again. I led her to Christ, prayed for her, and showed her her right. Now, the problem is many people are in church, but they don't understand the cross. They don't. And in a few moments tonight, I'll be showing you something about the cross. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 24. Are you there? Whoa, I'm off there now. First Thessalonians 5, 24. If you found it, please say amen. The amen was low, so I believe you're still struggling to get there. Amen. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. I'll wait for you to get there. We teach here, so you look into scriptures. You should be done. All right? First Thessalonians chapter 5, 24. If you found it, please say amen. amen. So it says, it reads, and I quote, Faithful is he that calleth you who also... Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. The priest jumped on the altar, permit me to use that word, and became the sacrifice. The one who called you to do something also does it through you. This is Calvary. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He called you to do something, but he does it in you. Now, let's jump to the cross and shame. Okay? Hebrews, no, let's do Isaiah now, Isaiah chapter 50. Don't tell me you're tired of turning to scriptures. You know, the signage of this church tells you the mandate of this church. 
So you should not be tired to open scriptures here. That's what we do here. Isaiah chapter number 50 and verse 5. Isaiah chapter number 50 and verse 5. I want to read from verse 5 through to 7. Online on site, Isaiah 50 and 5. If you found it, please say amen. amen. I want to read three verses, 5, 6, and 7. Please listen at me read. It says, the Lord, the God, hath opened my ear. Now watch this. This is a prophecy actually speaking about Jesus the Christ. It says, the Lord God had opened my ear and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Verse 6. I gave my back to the smiters, speaking about Jesus, and my cheeks to them that plucked up the hair. You know, I've often said it to people. The closest explanation, the closest movie explanation to what Jesus went through on Calvary's cross was the passion of the Christ. Any other thing before it, they tampered it down. If you watch that movie, you saw that what they used to, you know, when you hear he was, you know, by his stripes he were healed, you think the stripes is Koboko. You see? You think what, what you have in your mind is they flow, pua, maybe as they give him one eight at the same time. Oga, okay? these Romans were brutal. They took bones and sharp objects and they, 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 they infused it into these whips. So when they flog somebody, have you seen what they call a rake before? The thing clips inside the skin and they draw it out. So it's not just flogging. So his inner flesh, when scripture said his body was broken and his blood was shed, you understand it better. Broken body. Now look at what Isaiah said. You know, you know I tell people that if you read the Bible very well, Christianity is not a scam. What Jesus went through, Isaiah prophesied, years before he came. See what Isaiah said. How did I get to 54? All right, 50. I gave my back, verse 6, Isaiah 56, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked up the hair. Please, men, women will understand this. Have they plucked your beards before? I didn't say shave. Some of you men, when they shave and they begin to fix you, you begin to shout. <laughs> you know, say some men, when they begin to fix you, they can't stay. This one, they sat, these soldiers were bad. They were plucking in. Pow! Pow! You shave with a shaving stick. They shaved him by plucking it one by one. I'm going somewhere with this. It says, I gave my back to the smiters, which means they flogged him. And my cheeks to them that plucked up the hair. I hid not my face. This is the emphasis of the Spirit of God tonight. Listen to this. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. What does this mean? I'll start by giving you an illustration. All right? There's this incident that happened. Very unfortunate guy. Unfortunate lad. You see, I tell people you have to be very careful when you see women around. Jokingly in church, I even tell, you know, a few of my sons, I said, you see, when you get a bag that belongs to a woman, you don't put your hand inside. If you see an ointment, I see some guys, one guy in church one time, I think he wanted to use a cream and he went with one of his female friends asking for cream. It's a very dangerous thing to take cream for a woman's hand because those cream, you can rub it and your palms turn green. You must have respect. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> you must have respect for women and their things. So this guy, unfortunately, bust into, you know, um, I've forgotten the exact thing, in case somebody knows the story online, walked into, I don't know if it's a bathroom or a room that women were changing. Now, listen to this very carefully. I want to explain scripture, scripture, scripture. He said he hid not his face from shame. Because you should hide your face in shame. But he hid not his face in shame. Why? So that you won't be ashamed. It's the law of substitution. Some of you are saying, Pastor, leave this quotation. Tell us the story. Finish it. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to do that. This guy walked into the place. Busted. And guess what? These women, not that they had changed, they were naked. 
say this with every sense of responsibility, naked. If I ask permission from the Holy Spirit, can I use this illustration? To be very sincere with you, I called my wife for the first time in my life. My wife doesn't know whatever I want to preach or teach. She comes to hear like you. I said, there's this illustration I have. Oh. As a woman, please tell me, what do you think? She said, it's fine. So, praise God. She said, it's fine. So, I'm okay. Jesus is Lord. Amen. So, this woman, this guy walks into this woman, and they were stuck naked. You know, reflex. What would the women do? Some of them began to cuddle. Some of them <laughs> were looking for things. Some of them, they are, maybe their garments were far away, and, and they wanted a way that they could just get it to grab themselves. But one was very smart. What did she do? She covered her face. Because you can see a naked person, but if you don't know the person, the person can still be bold around you. You didn't hear what I said. Did you hear what I said? When you are ashamed, now, why did she hide her face? Let me tell you the gospel truth. You cannot be naked and bold. The moment there's nakedness, there's what? They shame. So what people do when they shame is that they hide their face. Adam, scripture said before sin got into the garden, it said they were naked and not ashamed. But the moment sin entered, they discovered they were naked. What did they do? They hid. So this lady covered her face because she was ashamed somebody saw her naked. But scripture, speaking of Jesus, said he was not ashamed. He did not hide his face, which means he saw shame and boldly walked into shame. Somebody will say, Pastor, what's the connection between a naked woman, her shame, and Jesus' shame on the cross? I'll tell you why. You know, what I want to say now is maybe controversial. But you know I'm not controversial. By the grace of God, I've been a balanced man in ministry over these years. I hate error. But this picture of Jesus on the cross with a towel around his loins is very unscriptural. He was naked. Did you hear what I said? Naked. And I'll show you in scripture. So when scripture says he hid not his face in shame. Oh, some people just look at me now. Pastor, he was naked. We'll see it in scripture. If I teach you anything it's not in the Bible, leave it. That's why scripture says, even naked, he hid not his face in shame, so that you don't have to be ashamed. Let me show you something. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. You know, there are some things <laughs> we accepted over time as a religious practice and truth, but we didn't search scriptures. Remember, you should know me, I don't talk carelessly. Matthew chapter 27. If you found it, please say amen. amen. Only one person, so I believe we are not all there. Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 27. I'm going to read a few verses. Matthew 27 and verse number 27. Matthew is a simple book to get to. So if you found it now, please say a big amen. amen. All right, he reads and I quote, he says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus, watch this, let's take it painstakingly, all right, took Jesus into the common hall. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. These were not, it's not what you call the SWAT team. These are not, uh, what do you call in America? The National Guards. Can I speak Nigerian language? These, <laughs> they're not SARS anymore now, she. What do we call them now? I don't know, the name is too much. I don't even know which one the name is anymore. SWAT or shoot at, there's one they used to call shoot at sight, and things like that. I hear things like crocodile smile and all of that. We have some very funny names here. For, praise God. Please let me talk where so they don't come and pick me. Um, verse 27. Okay. It says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall. Picture this. They took him. Soldiers. Roman soldiers. Brutal. Their own. Do you know? Do you know the purpose of crucifixion? The main aim of crucifixion was a shameful death. The most shameful death then was to be crucified. So the cross, Jesus dying on the cross was a picture of shame. What we think about it is just pain, but there's also shame. 
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him. This is the first strip, you know. I'm giving you some other ones. Now, now, I, I told you religion is de deadly. Is it in your Bible that they stripped him? I ah, know. Some people are not talking to me. Until you see it, I won't go on. So maybe it's only here. I have it. Did they strip Jesus? Okay. We all went to school. What does it mean to strip? You can't be stripped and be wearing boxers. He was not wearing anything. They stripped him. You didn't hear what I said. Jesus stood before um, soldiers, stuck naked. Scriptures tells us in Isaiah, he hid not his face in shame. He took the shame boldly. I mean, I don't want to tell you to picture it. The average person will cover his face. Am I lying? You cover it, but he hid not his face. I wish somebody is getting this tonight. He hid not his face so that you wouldn't have to be ashamed. So verse 28 says, they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. So when they stripped him naked, they put on him a scarlet robe, all right, to mock him as a king. Verse 29, and they plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him. But they didn't know they were fulfilling scriptures. They bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. You see, I tell people, the fact that people mock you, Jesus was mocked. It shouldn't make you stop. Just make sure that you're in the will of the Father. Scripture says, let us go without the camp, that we may bear his reproach. All right. So where, where, where did I stop? Let me make sure you're following me. Where did I stop? Bible students, which verse did I stop? 31. Uh, I'm here 28, 39, 21. But, well. 30 now. All right. Yeah, that's true. No, it's 30. Oh, yeah, 30 now. That's true. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Now, this is what they did. They put a crown of thorns. Assuming they stopped there, they have been good. They now applied pressure. Boom. So every, every spike on that crown went into his brain, but it was also fulfillment of prophecy. He bled there. All right? Now, verse 31. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off him. Now, notice he was first naked. They put a robe. Now they are taking the robe. Is he still stuck naked? Think about it. First, they had to remove the robe. Sorry, they had to strip him to put the robe. Mocked him. After they mocked him, they took off the robe to wear him his clothes. So how many times was he naked there? How many times was he naked there? Twice. Verse 31. And after they, this, what you are reading is in Bible. It's not a pastor's philosophy. It's scripture. It says, and after they had mocked him, they took the robe off him and put his own raiment on him and led him away. To, so they now wore him his clothes to, to crucify him. Verse 32. And as they came out, they found a man and all of that. Now, let me jump to... Uh, okay, let me just stop at 31. And after they had mocked him, they took off the robe of him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to be crucified. Did Jesus face nakedness? Did Jesus see nakedness? <laughs> but the Bible says in Isaiah, he hid not his face in shame. The normal man will be naked and be ashamed. Now, let me give you a prophetic pattern the Holy Ghost taught me. You know, the Bible says the first Adam. Who is the last Adam? He's not the second Adam. He's the last. The first Adam was naked. Do you believe Adam and Eve were naked because they were ashamed when they were naked? Am I correct? All right? First, when they were, when they were with God, in fellowship with God, they were naked and not ashamed. When sin came, they became naked and ashamed. Am I correct? But because the last Adam came to correct the faults of the first Adam, the last Adam was naked and not ashamed. Where the first Adam was naked and ashamed. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to take that one more time. The last Adam came to correct the errors of the first Adam. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The first Adam said, it's the wife that you gave me. The last Adam came to build his wife. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And gave himself up for her. He didn't blame her. Even till now, he says he's washing her with the water. By the water of his word. So that what the last Adam came to do was to correct the errors of the first Adam. So the first Adam left the garden ashamed of his nakedness. The last Adam was naked but not ashamed. So that you and I will never see shame. If there's any transaction of shame in your life, it's illegal by the cross. It's illegal. You have no reason. You need to understand when scripture says you are not guilty, somebody paid the price. Ah, imagine you go and pay for something and you discover that somebody had paid for it for you for one year and the person was collecting your money. How do you go back there? Something you just paid for, you discover somebody had paid and somebody had been taking you for granted. That's what happens with some of us and Calvary. So the last Adam left naked but not ashamed. The first Adam was naked but he was ashamed. So that we wouldn't have to be ashamed. Matthew 24. I'll begin to close with this. Matthew 24. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew 24. You know, I want to say something very sensitive. Let me just get to Matthew first. Um, and I say this with every sense, sense of responsibility. Do you know, child of God, <clears throat> do you know that a mother's love is almost constant. Am I correct? I need, I need some people to agree with me. If you don't agree, let me know. Is, is a mother's love, maybe, in, should we say in Africa, is a mother's love constant or almost constant? Nobody's talking to me. You know the quality of a mother's love now. You should know what I'm saying. Constant. Almost constant. Constant K. Almost constant. I think we are speaking from our experiences now. Okay. But we agree that there's a debt to a mother's love. Okay, I want to ask the next one. I know you people won't have mercy on the next one. Is the father's love constant? If you ask that kind of problem in Africa, question in Africa, you are ready for problems. If you ask this question in the black community in America, they will tell you flat no, because they have absentee fathers. But you see them even when they break through and all of that, my mama, my mama, mama worked four jobs, these days and all of that, and they're ready to mama, I'm going to hammer. Uh, one guy, one guy, one guy in, uh, what do they call it, in Nigerian music industry, his song that brought him out was, mama, when I hammer, I'm going to buy you a Range Rover. And I'm like, the papa, what do I the papa? The truth of the matter is that we grow up together and I know his father. So I'm like, he's naked now. What? The man is alive. They don't think of us. <laughs> so the mother's love is, truth be told, for the want of a better expression, so some people don't fry me, almost constant, if not constant, depending on your experience. Do you know a mother can practically die for you? Your mother. Forget all those things she does when she slaps you, when you are messing up and all of that. And tells you she will kill you. She can't. Their love is firm. Okay? Sincerely, the, 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 the love of a father is not constant in many cases. There are many people that have never seen the father's love, their biological father's love. Many. I can give you story upon story. In the office, as a pastor that I'm calling to, pastor and teacher, I hear things. My father is this, my father is that. Some, their father is alive, but no connection. The man doesn't send them. And they too, they've, pardon please, I, I shouldn't be speaking those things because people are listening to me from all over the world. Amen. The man doesn't, you know, what's, what's, what's the right word for send? He doesn't really care about them. Okay? And they've taken it that way. Then I saw something in scripture. 
But first, before I say this, let me give you an example. My pa- an illustration. My pastor woke up one morning and during Father's Day, you know me now, you know, you know my perspective on Father's Day. <laughs> Nobody remembers his Father's Day. But Mother's Day, we have like four. They will haunt you. Happy Mother's Day. You are even confused. I greet my mother, Happy Mother's Day. How many times in a year? One day I called her and said, Ha, today's Mother's Day. <laughs> So she would have said yes, so <laughs> all right. And I've told people humorously, sincerely, it's a woman's world. It's not a man's world. People don't know it's a woman's world. But Father's Day, people don't even remember. So one day what I did is I went to the chat group of church and I posted a picture, if they remember. During Mother's Day. So they put a picture of about four, five, six men who were carrying babies. All right? And the women were, you know, they just put to bed. And there was an inscription there. These were the men that made Mother's Day possible. Did you get that? So there's no, more, there's, no, there's no Mother's Day without Father's Day. Now, my pastor got up the pulpit, if you know my pastor very well. He said, he, he used to the move of the Spirit. Then he said, um, God said, no, he said, how many of you never received, on a Father's Day, never had love from your father? The question of having love from your mother is not a question. Almost everybody. But father's love? So a lot of people raised their hands up. So my pastor maybe forgot that he was online and they had branches all over the world. So in those branches, many pastors came up. Many fathers came up and said they were not loved by their fathers. And they, no, no. The question was, if you've never received a gift from your father since you were born, God told me to give you a gift. Ah. He forgot that they were branches. After service, they gave him the data. He said, in the least, we're grandfathers. Do you hear what I said? Grandfathers who said they never felt the love of their father, never got the gift, and they wanted a gift from their spiritual father. When they compared the list, he said, even from London, you are when they compare the list, he, he, he was afraid. No, what he said, he said, God, now I need you as a father to help me pay these bills. <laughs> he looked at it and said, God, now you. As my father, I have to help me. And he said, God helped him. And he gave every man, father, upcoming father, grandfather. Thank God there was no great grandfather. There would have been a problem. He gave every male a shirt. You think it's his beans? Go and try it. Bought every, I brought all of them, got a shirt from him. And that for the first time, many of them responded, for the first time, they felt the love. Of a father. Let me shock you. Let me shock you. There are many men who are doing well, but walking with wounds in their hearts. Do you know that boys, especially boys, need validation from their father? Even girls. They know their mother loves them, but they are doing things to please their father. Haven't you observed? Now, why is Pastor saying all of this? I want to show you that on the cross, this thing that we are talking about was a reality. On the cross of Jesus, did you see Mary there, the mother? Was she showing love? Was she showing love? You don't agree she was showing love? Uh-uh. She sat down there. Crying. You think she was laughing? No. It wasn't a party. Who was the father of Jesus? Make sure you get this correctly or else I'll flog some of you here. Who was the father of Jesus? Somebody said Joseph. No. Who? No. Let's like, take it literally. Who was the father? The God, God, yeah? The Spirit implanted it through His Spirit. Who was the mother? Early. Mary. Joseph had, was not in the equation. Sure, you know. Joseph just covered the shame. You hear what I said? Just covered the shame. On the cross, did his father reject him? His father rejected him. But the mother was there, accepting him. Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani, why have you forsaken me? But his mother was there. The people should bring my son down from my... You know the question I used to ask, where, is Joseph? where was Joseph? <laughs> have you thought about it? Although some theologians believe that by then Joseph was dead. Okay, but where was Joseph? All right, so we see a pattern on the cross. On the cross, Jesus was rejected by his father 
momentarily do. Do you have, some of you are looking at me saying, did God reject him? Oh, let me tell you, he didn't just reject him. He, as it were, turned his back on him because he does not behold iniquity. And on the cross, he was carrying the entire iniquity of the world. And Jehovah cannot behold iniquity with his eyes. So he turned his back on his son. Some of you once pleased your father, but somewhere along the line, maybe you didn't read the course he wanted you to read. Maybe I'm speaking prophetically now. He didn't read the course he wanted you, and somehow your father just was angry at you. It happened to Jesus. At one point, the father said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. But at the cross, he turned his back on his father. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, why did Jesus go through all of that? So that the people who are going through rejection from their father will find healing. Are you getting what I'm saying? He was rejected by your father. And if you read down the line, let me show you. Have we read the scripture? Did I give you the scripture? Matthew 24, 46. Let's, let's read it. We'll close with this. I want to show you what happened after the father rejected him. Matthew 24, 46. The cross is the answer. A revelation of the cross of Jesus is the answer to shame. He took your place. Was stripped naked at a point in time. But he didn't hide his face from shame. So that you won't see shame. In closing, Matthew's Gospel 24. 46. Matthew's Gospel 24, 46. Where am I? 24. Amen. God. I think I got it wrong somewhere here. I'll get it back. Who can? Who can get it for me quickly? Where Jesus? Where he cried, "Why have you forsaken me?" Somebody get that for me. It's in Matthew's Gospel, 20. Let's see that now. I, I needed Matthew's account. I know Mark. Mark, okay, let's, let's go to Mark. Which one do you have? Matthew 27. Two, four, six. Okay, that's it. Let, let me use Matthew's rendition. Matthew 27, 46. All right. It says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. This is to say, my God, my God, why, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man called for Elias. Who is Elias? Elijah. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Verse 50. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain in two from top to bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. What did the veil represent? So his father rejected him so that we can have access to the father. Are you getting what I'm saying? The veil that kept us out was torn when he suffered rejection from his father. So why have you forsaken me? After the rejection of the father, the next verse tells us the, red, the, the veil was torn in two from top to bottom so that we can have access to the father. Everything Jesus went through on the cross was for us. You know, we are very used to the fact that Jesus died for our sins. We know that. Died for our poverty. How many of you believe that? You believe that he sorted the poverty problem? <laughs> if you don't believe that, I do. He did. But there's one more thing we are not conversant about. Jesus died for our shame. He died for our shame. So whoever you are under the sound of my voice, play for me please. Whoever you are under the sound of my voice, and you have been struggling with shame, online and on ground, God has sent me with his word to you today. He took your shame away. You see, let me speak prophetically. There are some people, they are just ashamed. They don't like the way they look. Too slim, not chubby enough. 
and you know women I'm sorry to say they put themselves in this box so they're always adjusting and adjusting it's a shame problem let me tell you something scripture said you have been accepted in the beloved you don't need to be ashamed anymore he took your shame so from today I want you to look at Calvary see him naked but he didn't hide his face from shame because if he hid his face from shame then you would have had the cause to be ashamed in life stand to your feet wherever you are and give him praise and worship thank him for the cross he took your shame he took my shame some of you have made mistakes in the past failed in the past and you've been holding on to the shame but God sent me as a prophet to speak into your life tonight and he's taking your shame you don't have to hold it there's no need to be ashamed the prodigal son could have been ashamed but he discovered the only way to get out of shame was to go back to the father father we thank you for healing in our emotions for everyone online on ground that is suffering from the spirit of shame by some form of rejection you were rejected by the father on calvary's cross so that we can be accepted we are accepted in the beloved thank you for your sacrifice in jesus name we have worship i said in jesus name we have worship put your hands and celebrate god for what he did on calvary somebody appreciate calvary I appreciate god for what he did on calvary thank you father for the cross of jesus christ is our victory in jesus name amen hallelujah praise the lord amen briefly you may be seated in the presence of god as uh, so we bring the service to a close amen so we are going to have mr kunle come take the offering and give the announcements um sunday morning promises to be a wonderful time in god's presence you don't want to miss it as we take it along these lines the way of love and the promises to be a blessing hallelujah bring someone to church online and on site don't come alone and be a channel of blessing to someone praise the lord so let's receive mr kunde as he benedicts god bless you hallelujah amen hallelujah let's package our offerings our tithes everything we've come to honor god with let's package it as well as we pray let's stand to our feet father we thank you for the privilege to give we thank you lord god for your blessings upon our life we thank you because you are our source we are grateful to you lord in jesus name we brought this to you we pray is accepted in the mighty name of jesus and I pray, Lord God, that even in hundred fools, you bless us in returns in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I really want to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I really want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Everyone you tell me. devotion tomorrow we say about tomorrow and friday 
So we join Pastor in morning devotion by 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 6.20, Monday through Friday. So we still have morning devotion tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, 6 a.m. to 6.20. Also, Sunday service, both online and on-site, by 9 a.m. But workers, we are, meant to be, we are supposed to be here on or before 8.30. As we come, the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let's, let's close the service. So say to your neighbor, for he opposes all things by the word of his power. And because he opposes all things, he will uphold you. Amen. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.